Among the labels on the supermarket shelves, you can now find those that say no MSG. Why does a major food company like Campbell's, for instance, feel it necessary to let you know that some of their products contain no MSG? And more than that, what is MSG? Monosodium glutamate. You may remember it from back in the 60s. That's when most of us first heard of the salt-like substance that was mainly used in Chinese restaurants and could give you what was then called an MSG buzz. Well, as we said when we first broadcast this story last November, MSG has come a long way from your local Chinese restaurant, and today its use in food is at an all-time high. Nearly 100 million pounds were consumed last year. It's in canned soups, dry soups, bouillon, nearly all bottled sauces and gravy mixes. It's in most salad dressings and canned meats. It's even in diet foods, frozen dinners, and pizzas. Hot dogs and lunch meats have it, microwave meals, and almost every kind of snack. Restaurants, airlines, and even hospitals routinely use it, and fast foods are full of it. Food companies that use it say it's safe, and for most people it is. But millions are suffering a host of symptoms, and some get violently sick. If I eat a certain amount of it, my nose gets clogged up and my throat, and I start wheezing. Last year, Sam Castick got so sick he had to be rushed to the hospital. The diagnosis? Reaction to MSG. When I complained about stomach aches, they did exploratory surgery. When I started to sleep a lot, they hospitalized me for narcolepsy. By the time doctors found out that Dolores Nick's problems were due to MSG, they had removed her gallbladder and appendix. The range of reactions is, is amazing to me as a physician. Asthma, heart palpitations, headache, dizziness. Dr. George Schwartz is a toxicologist who has studied the adverse effects of MSG for more than 10 years. In addition to several medical textbooks, he's written a book for laymen on MSG. He says that contrary to what we're being led to believe, MSG is not simply a seasoning that makes food taste better. The difficulty is it goes into people's systems and it has tremendous effects throughout their body. Because of his activism, he's become a thorn in the side of the food industry and the FDA. But Dr. Schwartz is not alone. There have been many published studies by doctors and scientists discussing the adverse effects of MSG. There is a lot of evidence that it causes headaches, this study from the Eastern Virginia Medical School. According to other studies, MSG can cause swelling as well as chest pains, a burning sensation, and an overall feeling of weakness. Dr. Rafe Lehrer from the Harvard Medical School writes of dangers to children. Still another report, this one from two Australian scientists, says it provokes asthma. And Dr. John Olney, a professor at the Washington University School of Medicine, who has published more than 200 studies and papers, says that his 20 years of research with laboratory animals shows MSG is a hazard for developing youngsters. I think it definitely poses a threat to infants and children. I think it poses a threat of causing irreversible brain damage to uh, immature humans. There's simply no point in alarming the public about a situation that, uh, uh, that they need not be alarmed about from a health standpoint. That's been the position of the Food and Drug Administration for the last 30 years. Michael Taylor is the newly appointed Deputy Commissioner for Policy. The FDA continues to agree with the food industry that MSG poses no health problems and they have no plans to take it off the list of safe ingredients. The FDA has, has been aware of studies that have been done and papers that have been written by doctors and scientists around the country saying that MSG causes all sorts of adverse reactions. Yet the agency has chosen to believe studies that say the contrary, that MSG is okay, and disregard the body of work that says just the opposite. Why is that? Well, your question suggests that there's some equal balance in the scientific literature on this, this question. That's simply not the case. There's a very large volume of, of evidence, uh, scientific studies conducted around the world that, uh, that demonstrates that these very broad uh, kinds of reactions simply are, are not attributable to MSG. So these people who have these reactions, it's what, psychosomatic or something? There could be any number of explanations uh, for the reactions that are, that are being reported. Why else would someone be so devastatingly sick 
And when you eliminate it, you're so well. Yeah, Dolores' yeah. next doctor told us that when she stays off MSG, she feels fine. But for years, before they knew what her problem was, it was disabling for her. I never knew when I would collapse. I, I knew that something was shutting down on me. But when you are just laying there and you're unable to talk, I often wondered if I was ever going to come out of it. It was terrible. It's like, I'm a dynamo, really, when I stay off this stuff. So why doesn't she just stay off it? It's not as easy as it might seem. Pure MSG must be labeled. That's an FDA regulation. The problem is a lot of food companies mix it with other ingredients. It can be hidden under a variety of different names like sodium cassinate, autolyzed yeast. Even natural flavorings can contain it. It's always in hydrolyzed protein and it shows up in some food you'd never dream of, like tuna fish. So you can come into a supermarket and read the label. If you read the label on this, if you don't know that it's in hydrolyzed protein, you think you're getting tuna fish that has no MSG in it. That's right. And it has MSG in it. Right. At present, there's no limit to the amount of MSG that can be put in food. Because it's added under different names, you can get several doses of MSG in the same product. So unless you know what to look for, you could have a problem. Sam, take a look at this one. I think you can have this. Sam Castick and his grandfather Rich had no idea that the food in their supermarket could be a health risk. Ooh, natural flavoring. Can't have that. But when Sam was hospitalized with a severe asthma attack, the doctor said he was reactive to MSG. And almost everything he'd been eating had MSG in it. Well, can of it. Why are we hearing about this now? I mean, we used to hear what people used to call the Chinese restaurant syndrome. People would get a, an MSG buzz, and then it sort of went away. But now, all of a sudden, we're hearing about it all over again. If you look at the 1960s, when you first heard about that, probably 10 to 15 times the quantity of MSG is now being added to our food. Why so much more now? Flavor enhancement has gotten to be big business. Let's say you and I form our own company. And we have a big vat of, of our soup right here, and you put in 20 chickens and 10 heads of, uh, of celery and, you know, things of that sort. Okay, now what if somebody comes along and says, forget about your 20 chickens, put in 10 chickens, and instead put in a pound of this stuff, and you're going to get a very similar flavor profile. And this stuff will cost less than This stuff the costs less than a dollar a pound. Chickens are expensive. MSG is cheap. Are there other reasons for using MSG besides the economic bottom line? We thought that was a good question, but a host of major food companies wouldn't answer it. Heinz wouldn't. The makers of Chef Boyardee refused. Progresso said no. Accent, no. The Lipton Company refused. The Campbell Soup Company also said no. We then turned to the Glutamate Association, an organization that promotes the use of MSG. They told us there's nothing wrong with MSG, it's perfectly safe to use. However, they wouldn't talk to us on camera either. They did give us a list of five doctors. One of them was Dr. Fred Atkins, an allergist, who wanted us to know he doesn't represent the Glutamate Association. What is it that, that MSG does in, in food? Why mm -hmm. put MSG in food? Mm -hmm. It's described to be a flavor enhancer so that it improves the taste of certain foods, supposedly. It makes it taste better. Right. Forgetting that it makes the food taste better. Mm -hmm. Put that aside. Are there any positive benefits from using MSG? I don't know of any, no. You don't know of any? No. Then why add it if people are getting sick from it? Well, I think it depends. Uh, first of all, it, are people really getting sick from it? And is it a, if some are, is it a small group of people or is it a large group of people? The estimates of how many are affected vary widely. Many doctors we spoke to said there could be a significant segment of the population that has experienced symptoms. Even the food industry acknowledges 2%. And 2% means 5 million people. Dr. John Olney is convinced many more are at risk. I'm talking about risk to infants and children. That makes up a very large percentage of the population. It was Dr. Olney's research showing possible danger to infants that led to the removal of MSG from baby food back in the 70s. He's concerned about children today who are exposed to unregulated amounts in the food they love most, fast food and snacks. Ten-year-old Jeremy Laros had been diagnosed as hyperactive, 
failing in school and had been subjected to everything from drug therapy to special education programs, but nothing helped. I couldn't get my work done and stuff, and so the teachers were always yelling at me, and, and everybody was teasing me because when they thought that I had a attention deficit disorder. Other children didn't want to be around him. Julie Laros was ready to give up. For five years, her son Jeremy was angry and aggressive toward his schoolmates and family. He was miserable because he couldn't cope with his own behavior. Jeremy's family took him to Dr. Schwartz, who told them to remove all MSG from his diet. Almost immediately, there were dramatic changes. His hyperactivity disappeared, his grades dramatically improved, and so did his relationships with friends and family. Yes, I'm okay. We lost him for five years, and we have him back. And he's a wonderful, delightful, beautiful, bright child, and um, it was a long, hard search. Let me ask you to get to the nut of this thing. Mm -hmm. Would you like to have more studies? Yes, I would. Now, you're the person the Glutamate Association sent us to see, mm -hmm. and you think there should be more studies? I think there should be more studies, yes, particularly in patients who complain of difficult reactions after MSG. I think it's a small group. But enough people in our population so that perhaps there is a problem that we need to do something about. At least we need to find I out. Think it, I think it requires further study. Several food companies have told us that because of consumer complaints, they're removing the pure MSG from their products. But when we question whether they were also removing the hidden sources of MSG, they told us they weren't sure. Do consumers have a right, for example, to go to a grocery store or, or a restaurant and be able to know that the food that they're about to eat won't make them sick? We think the current rules governing disclosure of MSG are adequate uh, to inform consumers from a health standpoint about the presence of MSG. Having said that, Mr. Taylor went on to announce that the FDA is about to propose a change in the rules that would require that hydrolyzed protein be labeled to say it contains MSG. But what about all those other ways MSG is hidden in foods? Will they also be labeled? You can see a label that says sodium cassinate. There can be some MSG in that. It will say autolyzed yeast. There can be some MSG in that. It can say natural flavorings. Those natural flavorings can contain glutamates, MSG. So under the new regulation, the new law, will all of those categories have to say this includes MSG? When MSG is present in another food ingredient at significant and functional levels where the MSG is having a, itself a flavor-enhancing function in the product, the answer is yes. I, I'm not prepared to tell you with respect to each of those examples that that's the case, but that's part of what will be resolved in the rulemaking process. The FDA says this process will take at least a year. In the meantime, what about the consumer who wants to avoid MSG? At least for now, you're on your own. When we recently spoke to the FDA for a progress report, they told us nothing's changed.